Hello, my name is Dr. Jackie Herman Elliott, and I'm a faculty member in TWU's Department of Language, Culture, and Gender Studies. And in today's video, I will be showing you how to use the Canvas Accessibility Checker. The Canvas Accessibility Checker tool allows you to scan the content you have provided on a Canvas page as a way of ensuring that all content is accessible. When you use the Accessibility Checker, you will be able to see ways to improve the accessibility of each page you design, as well as suggestions for how you might easily go about making those improvements um, to any issues that exist on your pages. Let's get started. To begin, you will need to open the page you want to edit. So I'm going to go over here to Pages, View All Pages, and I'm going to be working on this page today that's called Dr. Martha Hughes Cannon. All right, so this page is open now and we want to go and click on the edit button. And now we're looking for the box where you can enter text. So right here in this field, you can see all of my text. Toward the bottom on the right hand side, you will see a button that features a small person inside of a circle. This is the accessibility checker button. Click on that button to begin checking for any issues on your page. On the right side of your screen, over here, a menu will appear that will provide you with a number of potential accessibility issues you can fix. And it looks like we have two identified issues, so let's work on those now. All right, so it looks like we've got here, the first issue appears to be an issue with color contrast, and that makes sense. Um, I've actually planted these issues for us to explore together. It's probably a little hard to read what's highlighted here, not just because it's highlighted, but it was difficult to before. It is a TW maroon backdrop to the text, so it's very dark against the black font or typeface. So to make this a little easier to read and to comply with the color contrast ratio recommendation that's been set forth by the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, we'll use this color contrast tool over here that's provided for us in this side menu to see how we can improve this, okay? So right now we're here, we can drag and move it around and I'm just gonna make it very, very white because I think that will be the highest contrast to the TW Maroon. I'm going to click Apply, and then if we scroll back up, you can see it's a lot easier to read this text of this heading now. And it's already applied, and it has actually moved me on to the next thing, that the next issue that we can address. So after clicking Apply, we've moved on, and Canvas can see that we've got a little bit of an issue here with this image. So let's find out what that is about. It says, Image file name should not be used as the alt attribute describing the image content. So this file that I uh, uploaded was saved as drcanon.jpg, but that's not really helpful to someone using a screen reader, right? Instead, let's think about maybe another way that we can reword this so that someone who's not able to view the image easily can understand that it is an image and, and what people are looking at. I will also say that if this was simply decorative text for some reason, maybe, you know, like a, a little banner image, it would not require alt text. But for this particular image, let's write a short statement. I'm going to write Dr. Martha Hughes Cannon pictured in front of lawmakers. All right. Now, if this was a decorative image, you could press the decorative image button right here. But since it's not, we're going to leave that alone. I've entered my new alt text. It is under 120 characters. And so now I'm going to press apply and it has applied. And now there's alt text and the issue has been resolved. So once all issues, identified issues, have been resolved, and they might not all be identified by the accessibility checker, but it should catch a lot of them, you'll see a little note here saying, no accessibility issues were detected, and some balloons congratulating you on a job well done. I'm gonna go ahead and click the little X box to remove that. Now, I also want to add or reiterate that the accessibility checker probably won't be able to catch every single issue, which is why it's important to attend the TW Teaching and Learning with Technology Office's training titled Making Documents and Presentations Usable by All Learners so you can learn more about links, images, structures, and tables and how to make them accessible on these pages. So. Let's talk about an example I've embedded in here that I knew the accessibility checker would not catch. 
And it's actually this link right here. And I, prior to being a universal design champion with TLT, I did this a lot. I would hyperlink click here because I thought click here. That's what we want to have hyperlinked. But what I now know is click here isn't very meaningful when read out of context, is it? And so that's complicated for screen readers too. So instead, we want to have more descriptive text that's more meaningful when read in context. And I'm going to try to reconstruct this sentence actually a little bit to read as follows. So I am going to write to learn more about Dr. Martha Hughes Cannon, comma, visit this, and then I'm going to keep my link really easily by writing biographical, let's say resource. And I'm going to remove that and I'm going to come back here, remove the C. So you can now see, fix this little typo real quick. To learn more about Dr. Martha Hughes Cannon, comma, visit this biographical resource. So now what's hyperlinked doesn't just say click here, it says biographical resource so that students or users um, who are learning in your Canvas shell will know exactly what um, they'll get when they click on this hyperlinked text. And to be clear, you do not need to bold hyperlink text or change the color to make it more visually distinct because it is already plenty uh, visually distinct on its own. You know, I've in the past bolded these a lot and I actually don't do that anymore. It's not necessary and actually just slows the screen reader down a little bit or you know if you have too much bolding it'll repeat that and that might get a little annoying to someone using a screen reader. So the final step you need to take to be sure that your applied changes stay in place is to simply press the save button at the bottom right right here. Saving these changes ensures that the revisions you've made will remain in place and accessible to all users which is one more way your learning space can provide equal access to all. Thank you so much and don't hesitate to reach out to the good people at TLT if you have questions.